Hi, this is an unboxing video. I just bought some flax seeds. I've never had flax seeds before. I've had flax meal, but I'll open this, look at it, show you guys, and then I'll tell you why I decided to buy flax seeds. I had to buy this on the internet because I haven't found any stores that sell flax seeds. And this was $13 for six pounds, but if I shopped around, I probably could get cheaper. So. It doesn't list the omega oil ratios in the ingredients, so. I guess I'll just have to rely on the internet for that. Um, and it tastes mildly bitter, and I love things that taste bitter. So, here are the brown flax seeds that I just bought. Okay, so I like to use flax seeds as my main source of omega-3 and in the past I used to use flaxseed oil but I figured these just buying the seeds would reduce the amount of oxidation that would occur in the oil and to reduce the oxidation you should reduce the amount of heat the oil is exposed to and amount of sunlight amount of oxygen that's exposed to The flaxseed oil I had before was cold pressed, but I'd store it in the freezer to reduce oxidation. But even cold pressing introduces some heat, and in the seed, uh, it's kind of protected from oxygen with the protective seed coating. Now. I plan on chopping up my seeds in a food processor. Oh. There is a concern I have about cyanogenic glycosides. Uh, flax seeds contain a fair amount of these cyanogenic glycosides which release hydrogen cyanide. but they don't have nearly as much of that stuff as cassava. So, from what I've seen on the internet, according to 
a few secondary sources. The way to get rid of the cyanogenic glycosides is to put the flax seeds in some water and let it sit overnight and then just pour out the water. But that wouldn't get rid of all of them. I mean, it might get rid of half or something. But I also read on this Canadian agricultural site that bamboo shoots contain, sometimes contain cyanogenic glycosides in when they were boiled at 98 degrees Celsius that removed like 90 something percent of the cyanogenic glycosides of, of the cyanide. So I think to get rid of the cyanide I'll just put it in water, let it sit overnight and then heat it up but not too much. I don't want to oxidize it in the same, uh, at the same time. But I read that I read on many secondary sources that it's best to consume omega three to omega six in a one to three ratio or or greater on the side of the omega three. So, just not more than three times as much omega-6 as omega-3. Uh, and some sources have said four, uh, one to four ratio, but say this pile represents omega-3 and this omega-6. Uh, yeah, I see there's three times as much here, one time omega-3, but if I consumed the same amount of omega-3 as omega-6, that would still be in that ratio. It's just at least one part for every three parts of omega-6. I don't know much about that ratio, but I figure I might as well follow it. Because omega-3 has more double bonds than omega-6. and uh, here's a model of omega-3. The oil and flaxseed is about half omega-3. Uh, and then the other oils are omega-6 and many other lipids that are just about the 18 carbon length. This is an omega-3. It's 18 carbons long. And let's see. All right, so from the first carbon, you count in three carbons, and then there's a double bond. And then uh, and the sixth carbon, there's a double bond, and then the ninth carbon, there's a double bond. And omega six has. A double bond on the sixth and ninth, and omega nine has a double bond on the ninth. So it's easy to remember. Three six nine. The three six nine will tell you where the double bonds are in your omega oil. And then at the end, there's the acid part. It's the double bonded oxygen and the OH group. And of course, there's hydrogens all along this. But the advantage of the double bonds is these molecules can't stack up as easily and they won't clog your arteries as easily. At least that's the theory. But it physically makes sense. And also, when these molecules get incorporated in your cell membranes, they're said to increase the membrane fluidity. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but it would make sense because this bend, uh, 
you know, the bend would just push around in the phospholipid bilayer and increase fluidity. So that's what they say. I'll talk more about lipids and what the best oils are later, but the, the best omega oils are the EPA and DHA, which are found in algae, and they come from algae. And so animals that consume algae, like fish, uh, well, fish consume animals that consume animals that consume algae. And so animals that get access to the algae accumulate this omega-3 in the form of DHA and EPA, and those are really good sources, but they're hard to come by, and it's hard to find a lot of omega-3 in that form. And oftentimes it's contaminated or oxidized. So I want to avoid oxidation and have a good source of omega-3. Uh, I hope this was informative. I hope I taught you something, and I hope you can teach me if I'm um, incorrect or I don't know. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. So, please like, comment, subscribe. If you don't subscribe, you might miss some important nutritional information that'll make you live longer and be healthier. So, if you don't subscribe, you might die a painful, miserable death. Uh, but I hope to see you next time.